Today on Beyond. Something up here of a tragedy took place. Probably a fire. Unexplained fires, the smell of a dead body lingering in the hallways. This house in Hollywood is haunted, and the owner is scared to death. He's taking drastic measures coming up on Beyond. But first... I'd like to reach my uh, canine partner, Cyril, that was killed in the line of duty. We had a short time together, and he died saving my life. That day we had a, a shooting. A suspect killed an innocent person. So that's when I sent my canine Cyril to apprehend him. At the time he apprehended him, the suspect pulled out another weapon and shot my dog in the heart. And Cyril come running back to me and, and died. Cyril taught me the, the meaning of loyalty. And whenever I had to correct him for doing wrong, and he come right back with unconditional love. He was loving, he was a lot of fun to be with, and I told him I was gonna miss him. And I told him daddy loves him. He was like a kid to me. Our sheriff re uh, gave him the Medal of Valor for saving lives. Plus, he saved my life and two other officers' lives. Using his extraordinary psychic ability to communicate with spirits, he's transformed lives by unlocking mysteries and sharing secrets from the other side. James Van Prague, best-selling author, renowned medium, and your connection to the world beyond. Hi, you're Bill, yes? Yes. Detective Bill Deputy. Neamey? Deputy Bill Neamey. Deputy Bill Neamey. And I know you're trying to reach your, your canine partner who passed over. Yes, Cyril was killed in the line of duty two okay, years ago. Okay, okay. Whenever I work with animals, I feel a, this is a, a love, which is really unconditional love, and that's what I feel with your, your animal, Very your the dog, so, okay? Yes. You've been sitting down, and the dog would come up and nuzzle its nose under your hand. Yes, he and would. And it's trying to get your attention, because yes. this is what he shows me. And like last night, Either was sitting down, looking, either looking at pictures or doing something with this animal, on a, on a, or talking about him, or yes, we were looking at his picture. Okay, and thank you. Well, life. he was right there, and he was trying to nuzzle his snout into your your hand. Okay. Yes. And um, your, your dog Ciro is his name. You said Ciro. Ciro. Yes. Um, he has a ex very strong s smell, sense of smell, and he shows me going back and forth in your living room or in your house where you are, and I'm sniffing like between the floor with a wall and the floor meet, and he's sniffing there, okay? So I don't know if you remember him used to doing this at all. Yes. Okay. <laughs> he's sweet. Oh, he's sweet. I want to hold him. He's talking about... Ah, uh, stop looking at me. <laughs> he's sweet. He's looking, 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 looking. Um, he's talking about you hiding things and him trying to find them. And he said, you do that. Yes, I do. Okay? And, you know, under the bed didn't work. No. Under the bed didn't work. He found it too easily. Yes, he did. But I want to go into the closet and put something in a pocket in the closet and this sort of a thing, okay? Yes, yes. I like the award that he won. Several, I think, but he has an award or something, and it was a ribbon or a gold thing with a ribbon. A Medal of Valor award. Okay, and you yes. have it hanging up, don't you? Yes. Because he loves that. Yes. <laughs> and he's very proud of that. Great. <laughs> he's very proud of that. And don't you move it. <laughs> <laughs> don't you move it. Because you you, 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 someone's telling you about moving that. Or maybe we should move it or take it down and put it somewhere else. My wife mentioned that to me. Yes, she did. Tell him no, he doesn't like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. He's telling me you were very strict at times with his food, yes. the, what he had to eat, and you would really give him a good, like, people should eat this good, this sort of a thing. Yes. And there's either one day a week there's a special treat. I'm not sure if it was Friday or something, he needs something different, or there's a big treat. Yes. But and after, you understand this? Yes, I understand. Okay? That. And he's telling me that after he did his job, you also gave him a big treat. Like a special type of food yes. or something. And he really looked forward to that. And I don't know if you, I hear you, if you had to sleep with him once in the cage. When, I went, when we were in school, he when slept in school. with me on the bed. Okay. And I don't want you to feel um, bad. He doesn't want you to feel bad about having to get another dog, having another dog, or getting another dog. I know that you're going, he's going on, but you, you're through. You've been going through this sort of stuff. You understand this? Yes. And he's okay with that. Great. Okay, he's okay Great. with that. Okay? All right. All right? And I want to thank you for your love and devotion. The animals thank you for your love and devotion. And, um, you know, you give out, you get back what you give out, and the two of you have a wonderful circle of love. 
I'll leave Great. it at that. All right? Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> the dog would come up and nuzzle its nose under your hand. Yes, he and would. And it's trying to get your attention. James described your dog as very demonstrative, it would seem, jumping up and down, licking. Did you, did you think that described him? Oh, yes. He, he was very high energy. And any time I sit down, he's always up nudging my arm to pet him. Uh, he's a very high-strung dog. He's just wanting to be on the go all the time. So that, that, I felt that was him. He's talking about you hiding things and him trying to find them. That's amazing. What we would do is I would hide narcotics under the couch, in the cabinet, in the closet, and have Cyril search for it. Okay, so this is a training? This is how you train yes, him? Yes, this to... is how you train him to find narcotics. And when he finds them, he gets rewarded with his ball. And it was a big game to him. He loved it. I like the award that he won. This is so amazing to me. There's a picture of him in the corner, a picture of me and him in the corner, and his urn on the top. So we had his uh, Medal of Valor draped over his urn of his ashes. Nobody else knew that. There's two, two pictures in, in my living room of, of me and Ciro, and of Ciro, and then his urn's in the middle. And that was amazing. Nobody else knew that but me and my wife. That's in my house. Someone's telling you about moving that. I was amazed because my wife took the ribbon off of the urn and put it back in the case. I heard yeah. from one of our producers you actually have the medal. Yes. Did you bring it here with you today? Yes, I did. Now, what made you do that? I think it's coming this way. I want to see this medal. Goodness. Here we go. Now, what did he get the medal for? What this happened? Is, this, is, uh, this is after he was killed. Uh, I see. They awarded the Medal of Valor due to the fact that the lives that we, we saved or he saved. So he saved my life and two other officers. You love that dog. Oh, I can yes, tell you I loved did. him more than a partner. He's like a, he's like a family member. I mean, he's with me every day of the week, every night, sleeps with me. It's a bond that's hard to describe. Next. I was actually struck. A painting was lifted off the floor and hit me on the head. Is a spirit haunting this house in the heart of Hollywood? And if so, why is she attacking this man's friends? The answers are coming up next on Beyond. Here in Hollywood is a man named Alex Amato. He loves his home, but there's only one problem. It's haunted. So we asked a colleague of mine, clairvoyant Pat Gigliardo, to help. Let's take a look. Musician and painter Alex Amato says he was drawn to this eccentric looking house in the heart of Hollywood, even though he had heard it was haunted. At first, the activity in the house was fascinating to Alex, but that fascination soon developed into fear. Last week, I went to bed about 10 o'clock, and every hour on the hour was a noise. It was like a and it got to the point where it was like 3 o'clock in the morning, because every time I'd start to go to sleep, it would happen again, and I would just be anticipating this noise. Who's causing all this mayhem? The folklore surrounding the house says it's a little girl named Tilly. Black magic was believed to be practiced in the house at one time, leading many to believe that spirits had been trapped here. The image of Tilly is a small figure, somewhat like a child, uh, moving very fast. A couple friends of mine have actually seen an image, mostly by the stairs. It's my understanding that there was a small girl that was killed on the property many years back, and I believe that this is Tilly. Alex's good friend Rachel has been a particular target of Tilly. She believes Tilly is jealous of her friendship with Alex. I've been actually hit by a painting when I spoke something um, negative about the energy of Tilly. That's the little girl's name in the house. I was actually struck. A painting was lifted off the floor and hit me on the head. Whether or not the spirits leave here tonight or not, I need them to quiet down. Police accredited clairvoyant and medium Pat Gagliardo has been flown from her home in Connecticut to help Alex. At her request, we have given her no information about Alex and the home. All that was asked of me is would I consider trying to help a family um, in a house somewhere in LA that felt as though there might be some paranormal activity. Alex, it's very nice to make your acquaintance. Sometimes if I'm walking somewhere and I feel an energy presence. I may have to stop. I may have to just wait a moment and see what kind of a presence it is. If it, in fact, is 
an entity that is stuck or grounded here or remaining here, or if in fact it's energy and information I'm picking up from the physical life. Before Pat even entered the house, she began picking up activity in the courtyard. This area was not a home, but either a garage or a barn. A barn. Okay, I do want to know if you know if in fact there was a family that lived here that there were three children, and definitely one being a female. Absolutely, small girl. Yes, young child, probably about four or five years old. Uh, the child uh, was definitely here, probably played in this area close to the barn. Alex believes the little girl Pat refers to is Tilly and wants to know why she's haunting his house. You have been having some verbal batterings with a female? Yeah. You have a child of four or five years old, an energy, that probably is unaware that she's not any longer the physical life. You'll hear and feel and experience power things, lights going on and off, tappings. This is the child's way of letting you know she's not happy with this. In the last six to eight months, you have done some cosmetic changes up here, haven't you? Yes, I have. And due to something that's created a lot of anguish in you, so I can only assume by that something up here of a tragedy took place. Um, probably a fire or some other kind of damage. A fire. And today, you're feeling better, but yet, why do I feel you felt responsible? Well, um, there was a thing going on in this house mm -hmm. for a while dealing with fires. There That's were right. a couple of them while I was staying here. And I got to the point where I felt like, was it my energy that was causing fire or something disruptive in my life or okay. something? The fires were, there were two of them. One, I believe something happened within the walls itself. So I'm assuming something electrical. Where was the other fire? The other fire was in the hallway. Downstairs, right? And below us. Yes. Okay. Uh, also, not your problem. Alex, by what I've uncovered tonight and what you have learned here this evening, I would like to recommend to you, one, that you truly work on your own anxieties and also as far as the spirit energy of the little girl, there is power in prayer. And I don't mean prayer from a book. You need to talk to that spirit and say something along the lines of going home, going into the light where there is peace and harmony and no more anxiousness. What's going to be the best thing for me to do tonight when you leave? You don't need to be here. This is what you need to say to that spirit's energy. You need to be where there is love and warmth and comfort. And I'm going to be okay. I want so them to be okay, too. They know? will be. It's okay. just going to take some time. Okay. And I'll help, too. I'll say some prayers also. I just want to thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Three children, and definitely one being a female. Pat immediately picked up on the small, youthful, female energy, said that there was a trauma. And that, to me, was overwhelming enough. If it in fact is this seven-year-old energy and not an adult energy, so I'm a grown woman, I'm not afraid of a seven-year-old. What really blew me away with Pat is when she walked in into my bedroom, she put her hands in a particular area and where she was pointing her hands, the entire wall had burned up. When you guys leave, I'm gonna light some sage, light a few candles, and I'm going to actually do what Pat said to help it move on. Welcome, Alex. Welcome to the show. So did you light your candles and say, Tilly, be gone? I did. You know, I lit candles, uh, I burned sage, and I took Pat's advice when she talked to me about saying prayer. And I wasn't like saying, you know, Tilly, pray to God. I was just saying, Tilly, you know, move on, find a place. But I also told her if she wanted to hang out, she was more than welcome. Okay. Just, you know. Now, did it work? Is the ghost still there? You know, to be very honest with you, 
after everybody left, after the film crew left, and after Pat left, and everybody, and I did my sage, and I did my candles, I was laying in my bed, and for one of the first times living in that house, I felt like I was completely alone. Like, I felt like I, I didn't have to think about anything or feel anything. Pat said, you know, they work on your anxiety because the spirit needs I'm your sorry. anxiety to stay there. Oh. And that she was very accurate with that. Thank you so much, Alex. I'm thanks, glad Alex. we were able to help you out. Thank you. Okay. Thank Pat, wherever she is. Okay. Yes, thanks, Pat. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Pat. Thank you. We'll <laughs> be right back. Next, were this man and woman brought together by shoes? How you guys met was very weird. That's right, and you'll find out how it happened next on Beyond. We now join James in the audience. Whose father passed over who was a doctor? Is it yours? There we are. Pardon me? A dentist, okay, white coat. Now, this is very strange, because before when I was doing meditation, a dentist showed up to me and talked to me about my teeth. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing here? And he said, I am here for your show. My daughter is in the audience. Um, he is very proud of you, very proud of you. And I don't know if there was a marriage problem or a marriage situation earlier on in life with you. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Okay. And he wants to tell you that that marriage you were in was a learning process in a way to get to where you are now with this gentleman. Okay? And how you guys met was very weird. I don't know it's through a friend. It was very bizarre surroundings. Okay? This is what he's talking to me about. That's correct. And he said, you would not have expected to you guys to meet the way you met. And then after you met, he's telling me that there were circumstances that happened and it looked too weird that you were meant to be together in a strange way. That's Understand that? Great. Right? Did you just bring shoes in recently to be repaired? Or was either one of you, or did the heel fall off or something? No. No? I'm wearing a brand new pair of shoes today for the oh, first time. Oh, you are? Brand new pair of shoes. OK, I'm sorry. He's talking about the new shoes, or the, doing the shoes, having the shoes. I don't I, know that's it. I worked in a shoe company for two years. You worked years. in a shoe company. Oh, OK, OK. He told me he didn't understand uh, before he passes over. He didn't understand what happened to him, and he was in a psychoma before he passes, or, or he's blacked out. Understand this? Yes. And um, he wants to thank you for rubbing his feet. Okay? Understand that? Okay. Okay. God bless you. I'll leave with that. All right? Thank okay. You. After you met, he's telling me that there were circumstances that happened and it looked too weird that you were meant to be together in a strange way. James connected with your father, and your father says that you two met in a very unusual way. How did you meet? Um, we actually met on a blind date. A girlfriend of mine had set us up. And we had a wonderful first evening, and the second date was a disaster. And then I started fixing Jeff up with all my single girlfriends. And then a couple of months later, I realized, oh my God. What I'm, am I doing? What am I doing? I'm <laughs> giving away the best thing that can, has ever happened to me. You're talking about the new shoes, or the, doing the shoes, having the shoes. Today's the first time I wore these, and I was discussing Does it on the way in. It was so weird because yeah. like 20 minutes before we were leaving, Jeff was like, should I wear these shoes? Shouldn't I wear these shoes? And I was like, no one's going to look at your shoes. I don't know if there was a marriage problem or a marriage situation earlier on in life with you. He mentioned something about a past boyfriend. And the night before he passed away, he said to me, well, obviously, I'm not going to mention names. He said, I really don't like this boy for you. Mm. And I really would like you not to marry him. And the next day, my dad passed away. So not many people know that story. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like a chance for a reading with James, send a letter to Beyond, P.O. Box 4399, Hollywood, California, 90078. Talking about Ciro the dog, because we're all, there's so many animal lovers in this country. Oh, They're yeah. watching going, oh, that's so sweet. And even though I'm a little skeptical, I want to talk a little bit about that, because I felt watching you that maybe there was a dog here. I don't know. The dog, you said the dog was there, and he was petting you and jumped on you. And right, I felt him on me. Like, I, it's weird because, of course, each different uh, animal you feel different, each spirit you feel different. With this animal, I felt the pressure on me as it came up my leg, and I actually felt like a bristle of hair. And I knew it was a German Shepherd. I saw the German Shepherd right there. Um, it's great how it works out, and 
the information the dog came through with thought was about how he took care of him and how he smelt, he his nuzzled him and the, under his hand, and the man understood that completely. So when you feel an animal, it's sort of uh, thought. The dog is giving it's, it's you thought. thoughts because we had an and animal lover, also. an animal psychic, who said for her it was pictures. It can be both. It can be pictures. It can be thoughts. It can be feelings. And it's interesting because just like with humans, I will get a thought with the feeling connected to it. And when animals, you work with animals, it's such unconditional love. It's pretty incredible.